Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's info to go webinar. My name is Annie Gaines, and I am the continuing education consultant here at the Idaho Commission for Libraries located in cold and cloudy Boise, Idaho. Our webinars and other continuing education opportunities are funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Everyone is muted and we encourage you to use the chat feature to ask questions and discuss with other attendees. As you exit the webinar, you will be prompted to complete an evaluation, and as always, we appreciate your honest feedback. <clears throat> Today's topic is findhelp.org, connecting patrons to local support services, presented by Ann Wolverton from United Way Treasure Valley. Ann, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Danny. I'm excited to get started. So the topic today is find help. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, is everyone seeing that screen now? Great. So I'd like to start today with a little bit of a discussion within our group. So this is a client scenario, something that we see a lot at United Way through our service providers and a scenario that might be someone that comes to one of your libraries looking for a little bit of assistance, a little bit of help. So I'll go ahead and read the scenario and then we'll have a discussion using the chat box um, some ways that this person might be able to get the help that they need. So the scenario is that Suzanne is a single parent who is struggling both financially and emotionally. She and her three year old son Robbie are living in a trailer without running water after leaving an abusive situation. Suzanne was furloughed from her part time job early in the COVID-19 pandemic and has been able to get by on a few hundred dollars that the government was sending each month. Recently, Suzanne was notified that these benefits have ended. Suzanne doesn't know where to find a job that will pay enough for their basic needs and isn't sure who would be able to watch Robbie if she wasn't working anyhow. She is feeling hopeless and is fearful that she will lose Robbie if conditions don't improve. So in the chat, if we can kind of participate together and identify some of the key issues that this family is experiencing. So I see loss of income, lack of water housing and employment, child care. And then if this scenario, if this family did show up at the library looking for assistance, what would be some of the appropriate providers or resources to connect this family with? Jesse Tree, that's great. Catch, those are some great Treasure Valley resources. YCAP, also great, yes. So there's some local resources that might be able to help her with her situation, but oftentimes it's hard to know exactly where you would direct this family for help. There's also local support groups, possibly food donations, all great, great resources. So if Suzanne did come to a library, you know, what would be the next steps in order to get her help? How would referrals happen within the library system? I know here in the Treasure Valley, a lot of times um, paper resource manuals or phone numbers are given to people that are looking for help. 
Um, also, you know, 211, that phone number has been given out in the past as a resource for a place where people could call to learn more about support in their community. But basically, what I'm here to talk about today, and thank you for just taking that moment to participate. But we know that currently in Idaho, that it's really difficult to navigate the system. So Idaho is resource rich. We have a lot of great resources in our local community, in our state, and nationwide services that serve Idaho. But oftentimes we find that we're connected poor, meaning that it's difficult for people to navigate the resources and that there's barriers in connecting those seeking services with the programs that can help serve them. So we're trying to make that easier and United Way of Treasure Valley, along with the Idaho Health Data Exchange, believes that findhelp.org is a solution to create more of a straight line through this process. So people are able to search by zip code, use this online database to find and connect to the programs that can help them. Some great things about findhelp.org is that it's completely free. So it's free for the people who are seeking services that are using it as a resource navigation tool. It's completely free for nonprofits to be listed on the site. So any program that offers free or reduced cost services, whether or not it's actually a nonprofit, is able to be listed on Find Help as a resource. It's really relevant information. So the Find Help data team is following up with each and every program every six months to make sure that the information listed is still accurate, keeping things up to date. It's also super, super easy to use. I'll give a demo of the site in a little bit, but it's just as easy as any Google search would be. And then it's completely private. So it's HIPAA and FERPA compliant and high trust certified. I'm gonna show you a video now. Um, that's just really a high level overview of everything Find Help can offer. And I want to state before I play this video, um, findhelp.org, was previously referred to as Aunt Bertha. So they just did a big branding overhaul. So previously Aunt Bertha, if you've ever heard anything about Aunt Bertha, it's the same platform. It's just now been rebranded as findhelp.org in order to give it a name that really resonates with the community and helps them understand right away what the website is all about. All right, so from that, that was the very high level overview. I'm actually going to go into the findhelp.org page now and give you a tutorial on how a basic search would work within the platform. Okay, so everyone now should be seeing the findhelp.org main landing page on the presentation screen. 
you're going to see right away that it is zip code based. So again, everything is done using your local zip code. That's going to make sure that you're pulling in the resources that are most appropriate for the people that are looking for services. Zip code based searching still does include statewide programs and also national programs that serve the state. Something else that's really cool about findhealth.org is it doesn't end at the border of Idaho. So if the closest resources are in Oregon or Washington, one of our border states, it's still gonna pull in those resources for people looking for services as long as they would serve people who actually live or work in our state. You're also gonna see right here on the homepage that you have the option to translate find help into more than 100 languages. So that's using Google Translate, which we know is not like the perfect way to translate into all languages, but it does get things a little bit closer. So if you have someone who comes in who's looking for resources, whose first language is not English, this is going to help them use and navigate the system on their own. Again, Findhelp.org is completely free and they want to keep privacy top of mind. So you're able to do the basic search functions without providing any personal information to allow searches with dignity. But if you're navigating or helping others navigate, best practice is always to sign up for a free account or log into your account if you already have one. So I'm going to do that now to show you how that changes the main landing page. So now that I'm logged in, you're going to see I have all of these great program tools that are now available for me. So I can track inbound referrals. That's if you have programs at your library that you're referring people to internally. I can view program analytics. So I'll show you that a little later, but there are some great reporting tools that can be used through Find Help if you're reporting out for any kind of board of directors or grants that you're applying for. You can update your programs. So any programs that are listed within Find Help, you have the ability at any time to edit your hours, info, website, um, eligibility requirements. So along with Find Help, reaching out to nonprofits every six months, you also have the ability to update your own programs at any time. You can also interact with your team members, see the people you're helping, and find additional tutorials and training. So let's go ahead and do a basic search. I'm going to type in a Boise zip code. I know we have people from all over the state attending today, as well as maybe some people out of state. You can type in your local zip code. You're going to see the number of programs changes based on the zip code that you provide. And know that in Idaho, we're still in phase one of bringing find help to the state. So in some of our more rural communities, there are going to be programs missing. I am looking to you for your help a little bit today. So if you see that programs are missing in Find Help, you have the ability to suggest them for the database. You can use this Suggest a Program button at the bottom of your screen, or you're also welcome to just email me directly any resource guides, self-rescue manuals, whether they're paper or digital, I can get them in to find help really, really easily and prioritize them for our state. So if you have more than 10 programs that need to be listed, I'd suggest just sending them directly to me and I'll make sure to get the resources in here. So you'll see in the Boise area, we have more than 1800 programs. That number is growing every day. So I give a lot of these presentations and earlier this month, we were under 1800. So they're adding more and more programs as people are suggesting them and as they're doing research within our communities. You'll see that there are icons at the top that further filter down the search results. So food, housing, transit, health, the main areas that we know people are searching for services in. Once you go into an icon, it's going to even go down further. So let's say we're looking for food pantries that serve the zip code I put in for Boise. So it brings us 24 results. 
Within those 24 results, you have the ability to filter it even further. So you're able to put in personal filters like age, gender, and housing situation, program filters, hours that it's open, and whether it's free completely. So again, all the programs listed are free or reduced cost, but if you need it to be completely free, that's an option there. Also income eligibility, this is especially important for some of those statewide programs um, like food stamp benefits or housing benefits. Programs that have claimed their listing are going to have a little check mark next to them. So when I talked about that you can go in and update your program information, organizations who have logged in to do that have claimed their listing and we know now that they are active on the site and they're making sure that all this information is up to date. Because of that, they get pulled to the top. So with the relevant search, you're getting those programs that are claimed along with the programs that are closest to the zip code that you put in. All results are also going to be mapped over here using this mapping tool, which really helps when people want to see where maybe the closest program is to where they live or work, especially if they have limited transportation. Again, you have the option to translate this into more than 100 languages. And once you do select another language, it will keep that selection as you navigate page to page. Each program card has a lot of interesting features with it as well. So you're always able to expand to find out more information about the program. It's going to give you alternate locations, everything about the hours, and also their website and any social media links. Once you have an account created, you're able to save programs. So if there are programs that you tend to refer people to that you want to have in a favorites folder, you can do that here. You can share the program card with others. So you're able to send as an email, send as a text. This is a new feature that a lot of people are really excited about because we know almost everyone has a phone that they're able to get a text message on regardless of what crisis situation they're in. And when you use the send as a text option, it's sending it from find help. So you're not having to provide any of your personal information in order to send this to someone else. You're also able to share on Facebook if you'd like to um, do it that way. There's a note section. So if you have certain notes that you'd like to save about the program for yourself, so when you're back in the system and looking at it as a referral, you'd have additional notes for yourself here. Those are just for you, or you're able to share within your team. You can also suggest edits. So again, Find Help is relying on the community to help keep everything up to date. So if I notice that it says it's closed today, but I called and they're actually open, I could message Find Help and let them know. Someone would follow up within 48 hours to confirm that change. Each and every program has the next steps as well. So they're going to tell you the best way to get services, but you're also able to log referrals directly from the site. You can log for yourself or someone you're referring for. You're going to provide some basic information and then submit on. If I actually went through and filled this out, it would also ask me for consent. So it's always making sure if you're referring for someone else that they've given you verbal consent to provide their information to the service. Now we know that most people, just like our scenario at the top, are looking for multiple help like multiple areas of help. So usually when you're seeking services, you're not only needing a food pantry, but you're also needing help with housing, maybe help with transit or healthcare. So that's where Find Help is a really, really great tool because it's everything in one place. I always suggest for people helping others navigate the system that you go ahead and hit the check mark next to any of the programs that they might be interested in. You'll see as I'm doing that, that it's bringing the selections to the bottom of my screen. From here, you can navigate to other screens. 
and you'll see that my selections stay with me. So then I can add additional from this screen to that page. You're also going to see that certain programs have other ways to interact with them. So for internet assistance here, it's going to allow you to apply directly on their site. Some programs have it where you can schedule appointments right from Find Help, or they might have additional screener tools in place that ask a short survey to make sure that the person being referred is qualified and eligible for their program. Once you have all the programs selected of the resources that the person would like, you can go ahead and hit that selection at the bottom, and it's going to pull all of those selections into one place. From here, you're able to email that list or also print it. And I'll show you the print screen, which I think is a really powerful tool. Oh, and it did not work for me. Print. Here we go. All right, print programs. And so it's pulling those full program cards into one place, which you're able to print and send with the person. So it's like creating a self-rescue manual that's specific for the person that you are helping. All right, I'm going to pause here for a moment and just open it up for questions. That was a lot of information coming to you all at once, and I want to make sure that I'm answering any questions you have and making sure that you understand how to use the site. So just drop them in the chat. All right, seeing none, I will go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the other tools that Find Help can provide. And if you think of anything in the meantime, feel free to drop it in. So under my program tools, these are some of the tools that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. So you have the ability to look at program analytics, interact with your team members, edit program listings, and track inbound referrals. So I'll show you program analytics first. And they have some main reports that are pulled for everyone who has the free Find Help account. And so one of the most powerful things I think is really looking at search trends in your area to understand more about what people in your community are really seeking in services. So I'll show you what a report looks like. And then know that since this is a data platform, we have the ability to pull really specific data. So if you are working on a report for a grant or for your board or for a community presentation, you can always reach out to me and ask about specifics that you might need. And I'm able to pull really um, easy to read and meaningful reports like this one based on the data within Find Help. So you'll see within the zip code that we're looking at now that the main search right now is for health. And that makes sense with our current um, health crisis that's going on through the pandemic. You'll see the second search is for transit. People are looking for how to get to where they need to go. And this does change every 90 days. So it's been really impactful for our community-based organizations, especially to see what people are searching for and then finding out if they really get the help that they need. So something that's really, really great about an online data platform like Find Help is we're able to do closed loop referrals. So when I talked about how you can do the referral right from the Find Help database, when you log a referral, they're going to put the name of the person that you're helping into the People I'm Helping tab. So you'll see I have Ivana Help. This is a demo program, so this is my fake client that I've referred to programs. If we go into her dashboard, you can see more about the referrals that have been made for her and whether or not she got the help that she needs. You're even able to add goals. So we had a close goal here of her getting her GED. 
you're going to see that she was referred to one program. And then within that referral, to close the loop, all three people involved are able to use this selection tab. So me, as the person who referred my client, I'm able to go in and update if she got the help that she needed. The client is able to go into their own site and update this tab. And then also the referring community-based organization is able to go in and let you know if they were able to get the help that they needed. So this helps with that closed loop referral process, which is something that's missing a lot within resource navigation in our state currently. We're just unsure when we give out a list of phone numbers or a list of resources, if people are actually getting the help that they need or if they're getting lost somewhere within the process and giving up. You're also able to have all of these actions within any inbound referrals. So if you're referring people to your internal programs, they're also able to go in and update if they got the help they needed. It's also a great place to manage any documents um, or forms that go along with a person that's seeking services. Does anyone have any questions there before I go into kind of the last piece of the demo um, on how to look for your programs or add programs to the site? All right, seeing none. I will let you know, so I know a lot of the libraries in the state have free or reduced programs that they want to get out into the community. So the best way to find your program is to go to the very bottom of any screen on the findhelp.org page and select browse programs. You're going to select the state that you serve. and then go into social services here. This is a new page. All right, we'll go another way. <laughs> so go back to the main page and go into the zip code you serve. And then at the top under this little search icon, you can type in the name of your organization or program. You're going to see that the Boise Public Library does pull up as a service listed along with the Meridian Library District. So both of those are listed in Find Help already, but neither of those programs is claimed. So if you go in and search and see that your library is listed, then you're actually able to go in and claim your program. To claim a program, you once again go down to the bottom of your page and you find the claim program button. It's going to ask for the program or agency name that you work for. And the zip code that you serve. So here you're going to see it pulls up all the possibilities based on my search terms. If I did work at the Boise Public Library, all I would do is hit this blue claim button to the side and find help would verify me working there based on my email. So I'm not going to actually hit it because I don't work at the library and find help would call me out on that and say like, hey, your email doesn't match and no one at the library can verify that you work there. But someone's going to be following up via email within 24 hours to let you know that your claim has been approved. Then once you have claimed your listing, you have the ability to go in and make those edits to your contact card and add additional programs. So likely the Boise Public Library, Meridian Library District, Garden City Public Library, you probably have a variety of programs that you'd like to get listed on Find Help. You're able to list any program on here under your main organization umbrella, as long as it's free or reduced in cost. 
And best practice is to have multiple people at your organization claim that they work there. So don't feel like it has to just be, you know, one person claiming and managing this. Multiple people can have free accounts and they can go in and claim. All that claim means is that you're saying, I work at this organization and if asked, I could provide the most basic information like hours of operation and website. If you are not seeing your organization or programs listed, then you can suggest adding it here. So there's the suggest adding it here button at the bottom of the claimed, or you're also able to scroll all the way to the bottom of any page and hit the suggest a program. They'll do a quick check, looking for the provider name, state, phone number, and website. They're just going to search really quickly to make sure that the program doesn't already exist in the site. And then they'll go ahead and follow up within 48 hours to verify the program details and get it listed on Find Help. So I encourage you all to take some time in the next few days to do the search, see if your programs are listed, and add them to the site. And I see a question in the chat if it can be divided up by branch. It absolutely can. And that's up to you whether or not you would like to have the main library listed and then just have the additional locations and branches listed on the contact card. When you went to the more info, a lot of times they'll have alternate locations listed and then kind of the main location holding the card or you can have separate program cards for each location. It's just really up to how you'd like to manage that within your own library. Are there any other questions? All right, I'm going to go back into my presentation. So I talked a little bit about the closed loop process. And before I talk more, I do want to let you know that Find Help is a tool for you. So however it's going to work best for your location is how we want you to use it. If it's just a basic search navigation tool that you let people know about that are searching for resources, that's fantastic. If you want to get more involved and use some of the other tools, including the closed loop referral, that is, you know, the ultimate dream of this resource navigation tool, but we understand that it's not one size fits all. When you do make a referral to a program, I just wanted to show you this example of what it's going to look like on the referral side. So the organization would get an email that looks something like this. And they're going to have that list of options right there within their Outlook message as to whether the person was able to get the help that they needed. So people don't have to log into the system to make those updates. It can do um, the updates directly from the email server. We went over this a little bit, but just some of the recent search activity for Idaho. Um, and this is the statewide versus that smaller zip code that I showed you. So just another great way to show you how this site can report out some data um, in a really meaningful way. Some other benefits for Find Help that we found. So it's an open network. It's here anytime, 24 hours a day, and it's across the entire US. So again, it doesn't stop at the border of Idaho. If you're looking for resources and you're on the East Coast, you're still able to log in and use findhelp.org. It's completely private and secure. So you can always search with confidence knowing that your information is being kept safe and confidential. 
and it is flexible. So again, it's not a one size fits all. It is made to be used however is best going to serve you. In Idaho specifically, we're working to bring this to the state. We have a lot of great partners. Um, the Idaho Health Data Exchange was the lead on this project. So they've been really impactful on bringing it into the hospital systems and healthcare providers in our state. Um, we know some of our larger hospitals have actually integrated it within their own data systems. So when you're doing a well visit check at your doctor's office and they're looking for resources that might help you if you're in crisis or in need, they're actually using find help without even realizing it because it's integrated within their current database. Since we launched Find Help in Idaho in March of 2021, you'll see just kind of the growth that we've had as far as programs being added to the database. Again, we're really leaning on our community members to help us, especially in the rural communities. We want to make sure that the resources that are in those areas are getting in to find help so that they can help the most people possible. We've also had an increase in the number of programs that are going in and claiming their listing and taking ownership of their listing. So some calls to action for all of you. Um, we have, you know, that you can go in and search for your programs, add them if they're not there, suggest programs that you see that are missing, um, and then start to use Find Help to help connect people who are seeking services. So the libraries, it's such a great resource. We know people are coming in and using your computers to try to find help when they're in crisis. Let them know about Find Help. It's a great tool and there's great ways for them to take the information with them. We know they can text it, email it, print it to go, whatever they need. And then, you know, again, send me resources if you have them. Don't waste any more time trying to update paper or electronic Excel resource manuals. Instead, let us get them in to find help so that they're there available and they're being updated every six months to make sure they're staying nice and relevant. I'm going to open it again for Q&A. That is kind of the end of my formal presentation, but happy to continue talking with you. I'm also here for you. So I am available if you think that the information shared today would be relevant for others at your library. I'm happy to do additional presentations. I'm happy to come one-on-one -on -one and work with you to get all your programs listed. Um, so email or call me and I would be happy to come out. Um, all right, I do see a question if there's any print materials to give out to patrons. So something that's exciting as we're bringing this to Idaho is that we're actually working to roll out findhelpidaho.org, which will just be another gateway into the Find Help Network, but it'll have a more localized fill. We'll have our own logo and we're actually able to manipulate the landing page a little to add on icons that are going to be relevant to Idahoans seeking services. That is getting rolled out at the very beginning of March, and we're going to be having a lot of printed materials to go along with that. Um, so we're hoping for little cards that can go in the library branches. Um, hopefully they'll have a QR code that could lead you to the Find Help app, those types of things. Um, so, happy to provide that. If you would like materials in the meantime that are not the Idaho specific, but just find help, I can absolutely work with the national team to see if we can get some materials to you. Just shoot me an email and let me know what you might need. All right, and I'm seeing the analytics question. I can run through that again quickly, absolutely. So let me share once again the Find Help screen. 
So on findhelp.org, in order to view the analytics, the first step is that you do need to be logged into the system. So the program analytics is a tool for those who have created their free account within findhelp.org. Once you're there, you can view the program analytics from your main landing page, or you can also find them under my program tools. Once you're there, there are the four main reports that are being offered for program analytics. So the screener report, that has the details about people that you are helping. Claim dashboard report is going to show information about those claimed listings. Activity report is information on your area for the last 90 days. And then the search trends, again, zip code specific for whatever region you're searching in. Any additional questions? Thank you so much, Anne, for sharing this wonderful resource with us. Yeah. Looks like you have another question. Do you have to have an organization level? This person created an account but can't see it yet. So when you create a new account, they are going to be sending you an email to verify your information. So I believe you'll need to go into your email, follow a link, and then you should be able to have access to everything. And if you're not seeing the email right away, please make sure to check your spam or junk folder, especially with everyone working remotely. We found that, that the um, firewall is a little bit stronger than usual, so that the email would be coming from find help and just make sure to check your junk folder for that. And if you're still not seeing it um, within 24 hours, then please reach out to me and I'll make sure to connect with you on that. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Anne. Thank you so much for sharing your, your expertise and this wonderful resource with us. Um, before we adjourn, I just wanted to share with folks, um, let's see. I'm going to share that um, once this survey, once this uh, Zoom has ended, you're gonna be prompted to complete a survey and we encourage you to share your honest feedback with us. Um, we'll also be reaching out to you within a week to share a link to this recording, um, as well as a link to findhelp.org. Um, and you can also follow the link in your email to see any previous webinars or to sign up for an upcoming webinar. Um, the next info to go is tools for tense situations and challenging patrons. That's a mouthful uh, with Steve Albrecht, who's um, a, a great presenter on that topic. It'll be March 15th. So thank you everyone um, for attending today's info to go. Thank you so much to Anne for presenting. Um, I hope everyone has an excellent day.